Hey, welcome to The Art of Code. My name is Martijn and what you see behind me here is a fair fireworks effect that I did a couple of years ago and um, I thought it'd be pretty cool to make this for you guys. So if that interests you, stick around. All right, I have here a brand new shader toy shader and uh, I'm going to start with just cleaning this up uh, the same way I always clean this up. So I'm going to uh, make a black screen so I can do that by just setting that to zero over there and uh, let's get rid of these comments as well and then I'm going to make it that my UV coordinates so right now my UV goes from zero over here to one one over here I'm going to make it that the origin is in the middle so I'm going to subtract one half of I resolution dot x y from that and then I'm going to divide it by just the Y over here and that makes it that it compensates for the fact that this viewport is not square. All right, so that will not change anything, but well, it changes something, but you can't really see it. Um, okay, so now for the fireworks, I'm going to make a fireworks consist out of a whole bunch of little sparks, little lights. And if you want to make a, a, a light, what I found the best way is to do something like this, where we say we get a distance uh, from from the pixel to the origin, and I do that like that. So the length of UV, so UV is basically the pixel coordinate, and I remapped it over here so that the origin is in the middle, and the length of the UV is just basically the distance from the pixel to the origin, uh, and that is stored in a variable d and we can just have a look at that real quick uh, and that will just show you something like that because in the middle it's darker because the distance to the origin is smaller so therefore it looks darker and as you get farther away from the origin it gets brighter and brighter because the distance to the origin is larger fair enough uh, so now now what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to do something like this where i divide by the distance and if you divide by the distance, you get a really nice looking light effect. And uh, if you want to get a bit more of an intuition of where that is, let's just go to Desmos real quick. Desmos.com. Uh, it's a really cool graphing calculator. <clears throat> so basically what we did right now is something like that, where we have 1 divided by x. <clears throat> and because this x over here corresponds to my d value over here, and my d value is a length, uh, length cannot be negative, uh, so it really is kind of like this. We have the absolute of x, and so so this would be very close to the light source, very close to the light source. It's very bright, actually in this case infinitely bright. Right, this is an asymptote over here. This goes goes to infinity, uh, and as you get farther away from the light on either side, it <clears throat> it gets darker and darker and darker. But it never gets to zero, so that that's kind of an important an important thing to consider is that that the fall off never goes completely to zero in this case, um, and it has some some advantages and some disadvantages. Um, but yeah, so so even a pixel all the way over here is still affected by this light a, a little bit. You, you don't really notice it right now, but if you have many lights on top of each other, then you will notice it. So anyways, that's just something to, to keep in mind. Uh, so now we have this, and now we could just take this out here and we could call this, uh, whatever, call it brightness, brightness. And then we can say over here, float brightness equals that, right? And so now we could make it brighter like that or less bright like that. Um, Okay, so now that I have a spark like that, I would want that spark to go to start at the origin and then fly off in a random direction, okay? And um, so for that, at first, I'm going to make a function that can take as an input a seed value, which is one number, and as an output, it gives me that random direction. And so for that, I'm going to make a function that returns a vec2, like an x and a y, and I'm gonna call it hash, one two and the reason why um, well this is a hashing function which is a uh, which is a function you can use for random 
for random or pseudo random numbers and it, it's uh, it's one two because it takes as an input one number as an output it gives me two numbers that's why it's called one two and so as an input I'm going to say okay um, throw a value in there call it X and as an output we're going to return some vector two that we're going to have to make um, so let's see here let's um, actually let me call this something else let me call it T and then over here I'm going to say float X equals the fractional component actually no let me let me do it the other way so I'm going to take the sine I'm going to throw that T into a sine into a sine wave and I'm going to multiply it by some larger number before I do that so that it falls somewhere on the infinite sine wave um, and then I am going to multiply the result which is between minus 1 and 1 right because a sine goes from minus 1 to 1 I'm going to multiply that result also by some larger number so so now my sine goes really high and really low and now I'm going to take the fractional component of that meaning everything after the decimal after the decimal point so that gives me a pseudo random number between 0 and 1 and then I'm going to have to do the same thing for the y so for the y I'm going to I'm going to do this same thing but maybe with some different numbers uh, so let's say over here and uh, over there and over here and I don't know let's just uh, do that oh, well not exactly the same but let's just do that uh, and also for good measure I mean we could we could just uh, stick the X value that we just calculated uh, in in here to make the Y more random and then we can return that right X comma Y and um, and now if I like let's see what we can do with that so so over here like uh, now I'm creating my spark all the way at the origin but I can move that right if I go over here and I subtract some vector 2 from it then it's gonna move except if I subtract 0 0 then obviously it doesn't do anything but if I change this then you can see I can move this around and negative it moves to the other side and that's just because this this entire thing is just remapping the origin to somewhere else right so so if I just had UV then the origin is at 0 0 but if I have UV minus 0.3 then I have to put in 0.3 in order to get uh, in order to be remapped to 0 0 over here I hope I hope that makes sense um, so so this allows me to move this anywhere I want basically uh, and so now I'm not going to put a, a constant in here. I'm going to put the, the, the output of this hash function in there. And so for that, let me call, uh, make a new vector, call it dear for direction. And I'm going to say hash one, two. And I'm going to stick some number into there in order to get a pseudo, ra pseudo random direction back. And uh, one thing to realize here is that both of the X and the Y here gets me something between 0 and 1 as a result. And, but I also want to go negative. Uh, so for that, uh, I'm just going to subtract 0 0.5 from this. So that now my, my X and my Y both are between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So I can also have negative directions. Uh, and then let me subtract dear from that see what that does so that gives me something over there and now if I would change the seed it gives me a different direction each time you see okay um, and now what we can do is um, so so this offset vector if, if if I multiply that by by zero let's say well if you multiply anything by zero the result is going to be zero so that just cancels out the entire movement and if I multiply it by 0 0.5 it's somewhere in the middle and I can so so I can slowly kind of move towards my end my end point right which is at 1 in this case um, so so if I multiply this dear value by some value that changes over time I can have I can make an animation and so let's do that um, so for that what I could do is I could multiply this by some value t and then my value t is the fractional component of i time and i time 
this I time here corresponds to this number over here that is increasing right now because I'm playing my shader uh, and um, if I don't do this fract here then my point will disappear because because right now it's uh, uh, it's, it's moved away from the origin by the direction times 645, right? So if I want to see it now, I'd have to re restart it, and now you see it fly off forever, basically, which is not what we want. That's why I say, let's do the fract of i time, so that every time it, it like, it, um, every time it passes one second, it kind of gets snapped back to, to, uh, to the origin. All right, so that is one point. Now I want obviously a bunch of points. And for that, I'm going to make a, a loop. So I'm gonna say for float i equals zero. i is smaller than uh, num, my, a, a number of particles that I'm, gonna, that I'm gonna make. And I'm gonna define that as a, um, I'm going to define that as a as a define at the top of my at the top of my shader so that you can easily change it after the fact, and then I plus plus, and then I'm going to go over here and stick this entire thing into my for loop, and I'm going to have to define over here my num particle. So define num particles, and uh, let's say uh, let's make 20 particles. And this is a float, so I have to put a decimal point there. Um, and now, uh, for each time I get through this loop, obviously I need to create a different, a different direction, right? And so for that, I need to have a different, a different seed that goes into my hash. And um, and for that, I can just use uh, my i value, right? Now, the only thing to 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 realize here is that. Um, uh, this hash value right now, if if the input is zero, then watch what happens. If the input is zero, then then this is going to be zero, and therefore my sign is going to be zero, and therefore this entire thing is going to be zero, and the same thing over here. So this particular hash function for an input of zero, it's always going to output zero. Uh, so you kind of have to take that into account because if I don't, let's see right now what happens. Um, kind of expecting one of the points to stay in the middle. Um, ah, no, okay. Uh, yeah, so this, this is gonna be zero, zero for the, for the first one, for where i equals zero. Um, but then because we subtract 0 0.5 from it, so there's always gonna be one that, that, that shoots off 45 degrees to the bottom here, which is, which is this one right here. Um, so if you don't if you don't want that, then you would have to make sure that you never throw zero into this hash function. Uh, so there we go. All right, so then we have that. Uh, now let's try to make this. Uh, well, actually, no. Before I do that, let's let's make a bunch more particles and see what happens. And then, okay, it gets too bright, so let's let's change the brightness. Uh, now you can see that. And now, uh, one thing to notice is that the, 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 the like the particles when they explode, they kind of they kind of show a bit of a square uh, explosion area, and that is because both the x and the y here are independent of each other, and they they both uh, well the offset over here the, the the direction has an x and the y component that can be between minus 0.5 and 0.5, both the x and on the y. And, and that kind of draws out a square, and that's kind of what you're seeing over here, that it, it looks kind of square. Uh, if you don't want that, then uh, we have to do something slightly different. So let me just um, copy this function over here and uh, call this hash12polar. And hash12polar is just gonna, instead of in Cartesian coordinate, coordinates, it's gonna calculate it in polar coordinates. Um, and that's gonna get rid of the square uh, shape over here. Um, so what I'm gonna do for this, instead of an X and a Y, I'm gonna, I'm gonna calculate an angle and a distance instead. And so the angle is the polar angle around the origin, which might be over here, the polar angle that goes all the way around like that. And that angle is between zero and two pi. And so because this value here is between zero and one right now, I have to multiply that by two pi. 
uh, in order to go from 0 to 2 pi. And so that gives me a polar angle all the way around. And then I need a distance. Uh, and the distance I can, I suppose I can keep the same. And now I have to calc, so now I have, I, now I have my position in polar coordinates, but I need to, I need to convert it back to, Cart to Cartesian coordinates. And for that, I'm just gonna do uh, the sine of the angle over here and the cosine of the angle over here. And then that whole thing multiplied by the distance. And let's see what that does. So instead of hash one two, I'm gonna do hash one two polar. And that gives me an error because over here I need to change that to angle. And now it moved uh, because uh, for the polar one, I should not subtract this 0.5 over here. And now also it's a little bit, it's a little bit, um, it gets a bit too big. So let's multiply it by 0.5 to make it a bit smaller. But now you can see that that is much rounder uh, the way the way this this looks. Okay, so now this looks a little bit uh, stupid over here. It doesn't really look uh, the way I want it to look. Uh, so let's play with that a little bit. Um, I think what we should do, so uh, we should change the brightness of of these points based on where in the where in the animation they are. Uh, so over here I could change the brightness, right, like this. And so what I could do here is I could use a mix to mix between two different values. Uh, let's say this, based on a third value, right? So now it would just take the 0 0.0005. If I make this one, then it makes it 0 0.001. Um, and what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's only bright right at the beginning uh, to kind of simulate like the explosion and then after that it should not be as bright. Uh, so for that I can just use a smooth step and I can put my t value into that. So the t value is the is the value that drives the animation for the, for the explosion. Uh, where zero is the beginning of the explosion and one is the end of the explosion. Um, and so what I can say here is I can say, um, okay, well at the beginning be be, um, let's see here. So at the beginning now it would be uh, 0 0.001 if if my t value is between 0 and 0 0.1 and then uh, after that it's going to be the smaller value. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now we have more more of an explosion looking effect and we could and we could make that um, we could make that even shorter by doing something like that. That's kind of maybe hard to see, but um, yeah, I wish I wish that it would do that faster. Um, let me see here. One, zero, five. I don't even really see it that much. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, I guess that flashes the entire screen. Uh, anyway, so like this is kind of stuff that you have to kind of play with in order to get exactly what you want. In the interest of time, I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, and we can add some sparkle to this uh, by turning by turning these particles on and off individually. And so what I could do for that is I could just say brightness times equals the sign of, of time, let's say, and time in, for the particles here is t, and that t value goes from 0 to 1, and, but we want, to, we want it to fluctuate a bunch of times, so that's why I'm going to multiply it by some larger number. And uh, this also goes negative, right, because the sign goes between minus 1 and 1. I want it to go from 0 to 1, so for that I'm going to multiply by 0 0.5 and then plus 0 0.5 and that gives me something like that uh, and actually uh, well here yeah, let's just first fix this thing so uh, so now we have this but we don't obviously want all particles to do everything exactly at the same time and so we want some offset and for the offset we can just use this i value again because this i value every time you go through it it changes by one right so 
So if I just add that, uh, now every particle is different, and it gives a nice little, a nice little sparkle effect. Um, uh, yeah, so here, just uh, just going through this real quick, I'd like to remap it to a zero one range. Basically, if you basically we start out with just a sign of something, right, which goes which goes from minus one to one, and then we multiply it by 0.5, so now it goes from 0.5 to minus 0.5, and now we just add 0.5 to it, right? So now it, now it is between zero and one, and that's kind of <clears throat> what I did there. Okay, so now that we have this, let's put this in its own function. So I'm gonna make float explosion, and that's gonna take as an input a, a, a UV coordinate, and also a time value, value t. And then I'm gonna take this entire thing here. Uh, yeah, like that, I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna stick that right here. And then uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have a variable called sparks and that is zero at the top and then in the end I'm going to return that so return sparks and then over here I'm going to add the sparks each time and then over here let's just test if this works so coal plus equals explosion explosion and it's going to take us an input a UV and that time value right so the time value will be fractive I time let's say, and actually over here, yeah, I can take this out here, because this this is, uh, regardless of whether this was in a function or not, like this really shouldn't be inside of the for loop, because because this doesn't, this is a constant, right? This doesn't really change from loop to loop. Um, so uh, so you would have to take that out, but I'm just, <coughs> I'm just gonna cut it out completely now, because we have it over here, and then we have it over there. Right, so this should be the same, and it is awesome. All right, so now we have to. Uh, well, actually, let's let's make a color for this now. So I'm going to make a random color, uh, and for that I am I am going to do something like this. So vec vec three oh, vec three color equals, and I'm going to make a sign. Of um, of a vector three with three different uh, with three different numbers. Let's say like that, and I'm going to multiply that. Um, well, actually, we don't we don't have to. Let me let me think here for a second. Basically, we want that color to be the same for the entire explosion, right? And then when it explodes again, it can be a different color, but for the, for the duration of the entire explosion, it should be the same color. And so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to multiply this by the floor of I time. So fract and floor are, are two sides of the same coin, uh, where floor, so I time is this number over here, right, that you see increasing. And floor just keeps what whatever is before the decimal point, and fract keeps whatever is after the decimal point. And so, and like we're using what's after the decimal point to drive this animation, uh, and what we're going to use what's before the decimal point to to make sure that the color it stays the same for the entire duration of the animation. Um, and so, what what this does is that like I have a number here that changes by every every second that changes. Um, and, and that gets multiplied by this vector three. So now I have a vector three that changes every second, right? It stays the same for one second and then snaps to the next vector three and the next vector three and the next one. And then I'm gonna stick that into, into, a, into a sign. So now I'm some, um, and, like, and that basically makes three sine waves. So basically what I'm gonna have is, so I have one sine wave for the red, then I have sine times some different number, uh, times 0 0.5 plus 0.5 for the, for the, for the green. So, and then another one, the sine x times some other number, maybe over there like that. 
times 0.5 plus 0.5 for for the blue right so for the blue and so now we have a different uh, a different red green and blue and now it, like anywhere like we can we can throw a seed into it which is let's say the seed is 31 and now we know okay for 31 we make a color that has a little bit of red and then and then the uh, green and the blue are exactly the are exactly the same uh, for 32 it's something else and so this gives me as an input I throw I, I like I throw in one number as an output I get I get a random color um, so let's see how that works so let me just go over here and let's multiply this by that color so color and now you see that the color um, is different for each for each one it just gets really dark and um, and that has a few different reasons but one reason is that like I don't want fully saturated colors because like as you can see a lot of the colors get really really dark and so um, oh and actually the other thing here is that I should still do times 0.5 plus 0.5 right to get it into the 0 1 range uh, but it's still very dark and so instead of times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 what I could also do is times 0 0.25 and then plus 0 0.75 in order to in order to bring more white into this so basically that's the difference between so if we just look at this one so this one right now goes from from 0 to 1 um, but uh, but I don't want them to get too close to 0 because then it gets too dark well then I could just like multiply this by 0.25 and do plus 0.75 so that it goes now it goes from 0 0.5 to 1 so it can never get too dark and that's probably a good idea so that you can see a little bit more and then the other thing I'm also going to do here is I'm just gonna multiply this color by some value larger than than one just to make it a little bit brighter so we can see it better all right, so now we have different explosions or different colored explosions. And if these colors don't change fast enough between different explosions, then you could just multiply this by some larger number to make, go take larger steps inside of the inside of the sine wave, so that now every every one of these is different. Uh, okay, um, I, I guess one other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that these things fade out to the towards the end. Um, so that it's not so abrupt that they disappear and for that I can just um, uh, I suppose I suppose I could just um, go over here and say brightness times equals and then some smooth step value uh, that takes as an input the time and by the way, if you don't know inside out what smooth step does, I highly recommend checking out my video that I made specifically about smooth step because uh, smooth step is used all the time and it's important that you know exactly how it works. So go check it out. Link is in the description. Um, so if I want to fade this out, that I could say, uh, let's say 0.8 and um, 1 and 0.8 so this this would make it that it fades out like my so my t value goes from 0 to 1 in order to go through the entire animation and this makes it that uh, from 0 to 0 0.8 nothing happens and from 0 0.8 to 1 it starts fading out so that so that it's not so abrupt in the end now let's see what that does so maybe that's maybe that's still a bit abrupt so let's just say from from 50% onwards it does that so now you can see that it fades out more and it makes everything a bit a bit smoother. Anyways, these are things that that you can tweak. Um, all right, so that is one explosion. So now let's make a bunch of explosions. So let's go over here and say define num explosions, and then let's set that to five. Uh, and then over here, I'm going to say four float i equals zero i is smaller than uh, num explosions and then i plus plus and close my loop over there 
and stick that in. And so now I have to make sure that every explosion is in a different location. And actually, before I do that, let's just uh, let's just make it simple here again for one second. Uh, let's say uh, uh, call plus equals 0 0.01 uh, divided by the length of UV. This is just going back to where we were uh, all the way in the beginning, uh, because here I want to I want to put them in different location, right? Because right now we only have one spot right in the middle. And uh, th these are just stand-ins for explosions at the moment. Um, and so in order to get this into a different, to get the explosion to happen at a different position, uh, we would subtract something here, right? So uh, let's say uh, 0.1 and that moves over, right? Uh, <clears throat> and so now we want to, to move this in a random in a random location so let's call this offs for offset and then i'm going to say vec2 offs equals and 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 now i like i do want them to to be positioned inside of a square uh, so that's why i still have the first one over here that is better in this case so let's use hash one two for this hash one two and then as an input, I'm going to throw in my iteration, i. And again, we don't want this to be zero, so let's just do i plus one. And now this gives me a vector between zero, zero, and one, one. So I'm gonna subtract 0 0.5 from it. Uh, and let's see what that does. Okay, so now we have a bunch of them in different locations. Uh, let's just do a whole bunch so I can see better what the distribution is here. Okay, so that is the distribution right now. So let's shape this a little bit. Uh, so I do offs times equals vec2. So we could uh, we could we could say like null null out uh, the x the x direction. Let's say so now everything is on one line, um, um, and now we could. We could, um, yeah. Let me make it slightly less bright. And now we could see if we're not out out of bounds here. So we could uh, we could multiply this by some smaller number. You see now it gets it, it contracts. But basically we want it to go all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. And I think from top to bottom that is actually one. But from left to right it might be something else. So let me see here from left to right. So one is not good because because of the aspect ratio of the screen, right? So I think we should multiply that 1.77. So if we do this, then we should be on the entire on the entire screen. Okay. Um, and now uh, we would want them to like once an explosion has happened somewhere, we would want the next explosion to happen somewhere else, so that it's not always in the same in the same spot. And for that. Uh, so we have something, the position, uh, similar to how the color only changes once per explosion, right? The position should also only change once per explosion. Uh, so we have to use this floor height time again. And so let me just take this out here and call it FT for floor time. And I'm going to say float FT equals this. And uh, that doesn't change anything, right? Okay. Uh, and now, uh, now I suppose we could add that over here. Let's see what that does. Yeah, so that changes one every every time when it's when it's done with the explosion. Uh, okay, so now let's get the original explosion back. Uh, so for that, I need to copy this copy paste this on the end here and uh, it's going to be way too much with this many explosions so let's uh, let's make it uh, five explosions um, and then I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna put this back and uh, let's also take this out here the fract of I time let's just call it T and I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna say float t equals that. 
Uh, and then over here, I have to subtract the offset. So offset, and let's see what that does. Cross our fingers, hope it works. Okay, so that works. It's just that um, uh, they need to all have a different time, basically. Uh, and so for that, I can... Um, yeah, if I don't want to do this twice, then let, let me let me actually put this back here because otherwise I'm going to have to do it twice. So, uh, okay, let me let me just put this back here. So there's my fract i time, and then over here I'm going to say i time, and uh, I want my i time to be different. I want the time to be different for every for every explosion, right? And so what I can do is I could just add to that i, but if I add just i, then it's gonna then it's gonna add one second each time, and because the explosion is one second, then it would just be on the next explosion, and you would not see they would still all go at the same time. Uh, but if I do i divided by num explosions, because if num explosions is five then i divided by num explosions goes from 0 to 1 pretty much right so uh, so it will just stagger it will just stagger the times a little bit so that you have even even explosions um, okay yeah and then over here obviously i also have to say t instead of i time and um, and then over here also um, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, uh, this is the fract of t, not the fract of i time. Okay, and now we have a bunch of different explosions all over the place. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of it. So, you know, you can play around with the number of particles here. I was I was playing around with it before. I thought, you know, if you only have a few particles, it almost could look like, I don't know, you could do something where maybe uh, where you simulate what happens inside of an atomic bomb where one electron like knocks off or a neutron knocks off something in, an, in, in another atom which knocks off something in another atom and you can have that chain reaction that kind of reminded me of, of something like this. Um, but let's say, let's do 50 and uh, well, let's do 75 times five explosions. And, uh, and there you have it. That's fireworks in a nutshell. Um, so yeah, I hope you, I hope you learned something with this. Uh, this, this, uh, this effect is, um, is not the most efficient, efficient effect because basically right now it like for every pixel it goes through uh, every particle and every explosion, which is, which is not terribly, not terribly efficient. Maybe I'll do another video about how, how you would go about optimizing this. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave it here. So uh, if you like this, please like, subscribe, comment. Uh, comment something on the, uh, on, the, on, the Facebook, on the Facebook group. If you want to support me, uh, it's always very much appreciated. Um, if, you, if you go to Patreon and see uh, how you can support me, that would be great too. And either way, I will see you 